What's going on guys, this is Joey Young coming at you another video for the week and this week we are outside in the garage as you can see I'm doing a water change for the rack this is a 200 gallon rack here with all of these 50 gallon uh, tanks all plumbed into one system here so I did a pretty big water change on one tank and I'll fill this up soon here but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some of these uh, pluckles out here and put them into the tank inside to help control some of the algae uh, that I'm having in the tank just because that tank is getting ready to be set up to house that new uh, wild discus, the uh, blue face heckle discus that I had. They went through quarantine pretty well. Everything looks good and I just want to have this tank ready for them uh, soon here. So we're going to go ahead and scoop some of these guys out and place that into that new tank. Alright, so I just want to show you guys what pleco I'm actually grabbing from the tank because I have a mix of them. This is a Paraguay uh, bristle nose pleco. As you can see, the pattern on this guy looks amazing. So I'm grabbing two of these guys, putting them in there, and since they're smaller, they will grow pretty fast, especially in that tank there. Um, amazing pleco here. So we'll go ahead and put them in real quick. All right, so here's the tank. It's actually not that bad. There's only algae on some of the front and maybe in the back. Side panels, granted, like there's no fish in here, and it's only really just maybe a couple shrimp. Uh, tank's not looking too bad. So, actually, what I'm gonna do is add those plecos into this tank. But before I do that, I'm gonna do a huge water change on here just to prep the tank for those um, wild discus. And I'm going to try to clean as much as possible. I may end up scraping some of this um, algae, or I might leave it for the plecos to eat so they have to eat. Look at that, the tank is so much cleaner and clear and nice. Well, kind of. I kind of cheated because I actually scraped the front uh, panel there so that you guys can actually see the tank because there's this covered in algae. Uh, the side walls and the back, uh, I didn't touch it just because I'm going to let the plecos do their thing. So what I did here was I kind of drained it 20%, put some hydrogen peroxide in here just to kill anything that may kind of cling onto the wall. It'll kind of just uh, save my cleaning down the road just a little bit longer. I'm gonna let the hydrogen peroxide do its thing for about 10 minutes and then fill this tank completely back up. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm actually gonna drain um, the tank another 20% just because I put a little bit more uh, hydrogen peroxide than normal. I don't want that to kind of linger in the tank when the fish are there. Uh, so I'm gonna drain it another probably 50% here. Fill it all the way back up. It should have all clean water turn it back on, put the plecos in here, and let them sit for probably a day uh, or so, and then we'll probably end up putting the discus in tomorrow. All right, so today's the big day. We are finally moving in the wild discus into their permanent home. They went through a approximately two week quarantine slash three week quarantine phase on top of the quarantine from the cellar. As a precaution, I always like to go through another set of quarantine so as you can see here, they went through a bunch of quarantine, copper uh, for ick, anything like that, um, Paragard, deworm, two types of deworm actually that is uh, fed through uh, flakes, um, protozoa, and some other stuff down here. The list is pretty long. Um, again, I like to make sure uh, things are good for the fish, especially wild caught fish or any other fish that I get. Uh, even though this tank really doesn't have any fish, uh, the first fish are going to be those plecos and really those discus. Um, you know, technically I can really use this as another quarantine tank, but as you can see, this is actually a bigger tank than actually this tank here. So the treatment is actually, the cost efficient of this treatment is actually a lot smaller. This is only a 25 gallon plus, maybe 10 gallons. So like 35 gallons worth of treatment versus you know, a 54 gallon tank over there plus, you know, a sump. So maybe like 60 or 65 gallons over there. Um, so way better here. Again, you guys will be able to see these discus a little bit better once I move them across. This tank is going to be used as just, you know, plants here and there plus, you know, going through the quarantine phase of everything. Another thing I want to mention is after I actually finished all of this, I turned back on my UV sterilizer. As you can see, it's on to help sterilize anything in the water column. Um, it's gotten you know multiple water changes, so these discus are actually adapt to my uh, tap water. And so what I do is, 
I'll keep this, you know, UV sterilizer to kill anything in here and kind of restart everything in, in terms of the tank. So if I ever get any new discus or any new uh, fish, I'll put them in here as a quarantine tank. Do the same pretty much steps here and then reset it with a UV sterilizer killing everything in here. I also did turn on the CO2 for about a couple of days here. So they are used to CO2 parameters, you know, dosing in the tank. So we'll go ahead and actually start moving them. Oh, by the way, we did have some um, aggression in terms of the discus. As you can see, there's four here. There's one down here that I actually had to separate because all four of those guys were beating up on this one guy here. So what I'm gonna do is actually probably put in these four guys into the tank first and actually move the one discus that's in the back there up into this tank, make sure that that discus is healthy, eating really well before actually putting them into that bigger tank. So let's go ahead and first move these four into the tank um, and we'll see how they like their new environment. Alright, so all the discus are actually in the tank now. I actually ended up moving all five of them in here just because one, they're in a new environment and they're probably going to reset the pecking order anyways. And two, uh, the tank's actually pretty big enough where, you know, if they do get picked on, one can, you know, stay on the other side while the other ones are, you know, on one end. So we'll see what happens. And actually the one that's getting picked on is the small one here up front here. So looks like, you know, that one's actually coming out big, happy, healthy. Uh, so we'll see what happens in a little bit here. It looks like they're still kind of weary about the new environment. Um, some of them are kind of scratched out from the netting process, uh, but I'm not too worried about that because in a couple of days they'll heal uh, very fast. So I want to give you guys my brief thought on wild discus so far. Again, it's only <laughs> it's only been like three weeks since I've actually kept wild caught discus. They're actually not as hard to keep as everyone thought they were. Uh, the one thing is they're definitely pretty shy. Now I bought these guys from Freshwater Exotics. If you guys haven't heard of them, definitely go check them out. They actually have a lot of wild caught fish. Uh, they recently just got into wild caught discus. To be honest and probably transparent, I'm not being sponsored by them at all. But you know, seeing price from price from different companies because I've actually bought from a lot of people before, uh, their pricing is probably the most affordable uh, pricing in terms of wild caught fish, and especially wild caught discus. Um, I was actually eyeing on getting some wild caught discus uh, for a while now and the reason why I haven't jumped the gun earlier was because of the pricing and also because I'm actually looking for heckles and certain ones didn't look really nice and actually when I saw their first batch and actually their pricing I actually had to you know jump on it just because the deal was too good to pass up. So these guys actually have a lot of room to grow. Um, obviously they're only about like maybe four and a half inches, four inches long. They can actually get really, really big and you know, this tank will be plenty for them. And I'll probably end up adding probably an SAE to help control some of the hair algae that may occur in this tank. And probably that's it. Maybe some smaller fish down the road. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you guys are subscribed and like always until next time guys, peace.